it's Adam here for PC Monitors and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Acer XN253QX. For some reason my system has decided to show this nice wallpaper which makes it look like it's a ViewSonic monitor and it's because their logo but it's an Acer monitor, an Acer Predator model. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons and a little joystick at the rear of the monitor. You can see that there. And there's also a little power LED and that glows blue when the monitor is turned on and it glows amber when the monitor is on standby. If you press the top button, that's the power button, so that's how you turn the monitor on and off. It technically turns it into sort of what would be called active off and that means that the monitor still draws a little bit of power because it's ready to sort of spring to life when you press the button again. So it does have a very small amount of standby power consumption, sort of a fraction of a watt. But there is a zero watt power switch at the back if you prefer, and that will completely cut the power off to the monitor. The second button down, or any of the other buttons if you press them, it will bring up this little sort of mini predator menu there, so you can change the game mode. There are various different settings here, G1, G2 and G3, um, called Action, Racing and Sports. They're kind of fully customizable presets and I explore this a little bit more in the written review but you can change various different options. So I've actually got Action set up as my sort of main test settings whereas Racing is my low blue light settings and I'll, I'll come across the low blue light modes of this monitor shortly but um, so you can sort of quickly switch between those two. You can't change absolutely everything here. You can't customize the color channels uh, for example, because that's applied universally, so that will be applied to your G1, G2 and G3. Uh, but you can certainly make quite a few adjustments, including to brightness and, and that kind of thing, and activating low blue light settings if you want. There's user, and that just allows sort of full customization. And we'll actually go to the user preset if you select one of the other modes and you make any changes manually. Standard, which is the factory default. Eco mode, which is just a little bit dimmer than standard, really, and graphics, uh, which is sort of very bright. Movie, which has some slightly different uh, color arrangements. But if you select any of these, they, they really just sort of change things to various different values. And um, you can see the contrast and brightness is, is not standard there, or, or, or maybe you can't see, but I know uh, that's not the standard value for either contrast or brightness. So it just makes various changes. You can make those changes manually um, if you prefer. As I said though, if you make any changes here, you see it's just switched to mode user. Um, so these presets don't really give you anything that you can't achieve with manual adjustment. However, the G1, G2 and G3 are useful because they allow you to quickly recall various different sets of settings. You can also change the brightness quickly, the input quickly. So you can cycle between DisplayPort or HDMI. And then there's the main menu. So if you press the joystick in, you can access the main menu. There are various different options here. It's laid out in the same sort of style that you'd get with usual Acer Predator models or recent Acer Predator monitors. There's the brightness that you can adjust, the contrast, blue light settings, various different settings. 80% is the weakest effect, 70% uh, is a bit stronger, 60 is a bit stronger, and 50% is a bit stronger again. As the settings become stronger, they reduce the blue color channel further, and that reduces the blue light output from the monitor. So as I said, 50%, that's the strongest setting. And this gives a really nice reduction in blue light output. What I, th what I would say though, is there is a bit of a green tint, and not just because of this wallpaper I'm using now, obviously lots of green there, but there is a green tint, and that's because the green channel is not reduced. It's only really the blue channel that's reduced. So the green channel remains strong. And the reason they do that is so it maintains strong contrast because reducing the green channel is really where you get the biggest hit in contrast. So they leave that as it is and that's quite common on low blue light settings. This sort of green tint, it's not extreme though and, and you do generally adapt to it in time, your eyes do adjust. So I'm kind of happy to use this in the evening as it is with reduced brightness. If you really want to, you can create your own low blue light setting by adjusting the color channels. So you'll see when you've got a low blue light setting active, and then you go on the color section of the menu, it says color temp blue light, uh, low blue light. 
and you can see that the blue channel there is 23, the green's 50 and the red's 50. That's essentially what this setting is doing. And if you set that to user, you can adjust that yourself so you could reduce the green if you want a bit. But as I said, this applies universally, so you can't sort of save these to one of your G1, G2, G3 presets and then easily recall them. So just be aware of that. There's Dark Boost, and I've got the Legom website, legom.nl, open just so I can show you what this does. And it is essentially a setting which skews the gamma curve so that darker shades appear lighter and more distinct from darker backgrounds. And that's designed as a competitive advantage in games. So level one would be the lowest level of enhancements. You can see off level one brightens up those dark shades. Level two brightens them up further. Level three brightens things up further. And that means that enemies would be more visible in, in darker surroundings, that kind of thing. And it doesn't affect the black point. So the actual black, um, I know this room is reasonably bright, so you can't really see the, the, the black properly. And um, there's a bit of glare there, that kind of thing. But the, the black point itself doesn't actually change. Whereas some settings completely flood the image. Um, some alternative settings from other manufacturers, they'll completely flood the image. And that can be really very unattractive. But this really just targets the slightly brighter colours than black. There's adaptive contrast, and that's a dynamic contrast setting, and that's explored in the review, written review. Next is colour. So you can change the gamma settings used by the monitor, 2.2 being the default. There's 1.9, 2.5, and gaming, which is very high indeed uh, in terms of gamma. I would say though. According to my measurements, at least on my unit, the actual gamma didn't correspond to what this was saying. So just think of these as relative levels, higher or lower, rather than exact numbers. Colour temp, you can change that to use as I've got now, which allows you to adjust the red, green and blue colour channels manually. Or you can set that to warm, which is the factory default. Normal, I don't really know why they've called it normal. It just looks odd, to be honest. I'm really kind of flooded and has clearly reduced contrast. And it's not normal because it's not the default setting anyway, so I don't really know what that's all about. Cool, which again looks really flooded, but also very cool, so there's a very high colour temperature. Not attractive either. Blue light, and I've gone through that. You can also adjust the saturation. So this is a digital saturation adjustment feature. If you prefer a more saturated look to the image, you can increase that. If you're going to 200, as you'll see from the video, things look absolutely ridiculous and cartoonish. Also be aware that this is not changing the colour gamut of the monitor. What it's doing is it's pulling shades closer to the edge of the colour gamut without expanding the colour gamut itself. So it essentially causes compression. It reduces the shade variety, especially for the more saturated shades. Things are sort of crushed together. And especially with more extreme adjustments here, things don't look right at all. But if you prefer, you can reduce saturation as well. And eventually things will go completely monochrome. What I would say is I know some users do prefer a more saturated look to the image and that's fine and slight adjustments here, fair enough. It's similar to NVIDIA's digital vibrance control list but it's a monitor side setting. Uh, just be aware of the effect you're having on the image in terms of crushing some of the shades at the higher end together um, by doing this. Six axis colour. So if you prefer a finer control of the colour, including the red, green and blue colour channels, but also cyan, yellow and magenta, you can do this. For my test settings, I didn't find that necessary um, in terms of setting up the monitor in an appropriate way. Uh, but, you know, by all means, have a fiddle with that if you want to and change those settings. Next is audio. So you can change the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5 millimetre jack. Monitors integrated speakers are reasonable, they're explored in the written review. Um, by reasonable I mean they're not amazing, but they're, they're alright, they kind of do the job more or less. Next is gaming. You can change the overdrive level used by the monitor, normal being optimal and the default, off or extreme, they're explored in the review. ULMB, ultra low motion blur. If these are greyed out it's probably because you haven't got the monitor set to an appropriate refresh rate and or you're using G-Sync. So in my case, I'm using G-Sync and I don't have the monitor set to an appropriate refresh rate for this. ULMB can be used at 144, 120 or 100 hertz. 
be aware of some issues at 100 hertz, which I discussed in the written review. But 144 hertz, I should now be able to you can see the ULMB is still greyed out, and that's because I've got G-Sync active, although I'm at 144 hertz. So monitor technology ULMB. So you can now see a lovely flickering, and that's because the backlight is flickering at a frequency matching the refresh rate of this display, so 144 hertz. Certainly is not flicker-free with this mode active, but that's exactly how it works. Again, explored in the written review beyond the scope of this video to discuss that further. You can see there's ULMB pulse width, which you can adjust, and that changes the length of the on cycle. Again, that's explored in the written review. So lower settings there make the screen dimmer, potentially improve the motion clarity. But really the motion clarity is very good with a pulse width of 100 anyway. The next feature is aim point. That gives you an on-screen crosshair. The three different designs you can choose. Icon 1, Icon 2, Icon 3. So that just puts a rather obvious crosshair in the centre of the screen for people who want that kind of thing. Well, there's Icon 2, Icon 3. I'll just show you Icon 3 quickly, why not? There you go, it's like a sort of propeller. Next is OSD. And that allows you to adjust various settings related to the OSD itself, such as the language it's displayed in. The timeout period, so how long after the last button press before things automatically disappear. Transparency, you can enable transparency effect or adjust the level of transparency of the OSD. Refresh rate num, that will display the refresh rate in the corner of the screen. That's useful if you've got G-Sync active um, because it'll actually correspond to the frame rate of the content between 30 and 240 frames a second. So it can be used as a frame rate counter, which can be certainly useful and it's an easy way to tell if the technology is working correctly. And the final section is System. It allows you to change things like the input, hotkey assignment. So before I entered the main menu system, you might recall there were two different options. If you press the first and second button or the second and third button, not including the power button, um, you can change what they do. So you can change that to mode, contrast, blue light, saturation, volume, overdrive, gamma, modes. So if, for example, you find that you're frequently fiddling with the blue light setting and you don't want to use the G1, G2, G3 presets, which I would recommend using for this instead, but, you know, if you don't want to, and perhaps you like to change saturation a lot, you can do that. And now you can see that they can be quickly controlled without entering the main OSD system. Next, there's wide modes so that adjust the scaling behavior of the monitor when you're using non-native resolutions. There's aspect, which will maintain the aspect ratio of the source resolution, but will fill up the screen as much as possible um, and use an interpolation process. So use as many of the pixels on the screen as possible. Whereas the one-to-one -one setting, which is the other option, that will display a big black border around the image and only use the pixels that are actually called for in the source resolution you've selected. Deep Sleep. This is a power saving feature. It's on by default. Um, I believe it's on by default. And this saves a little bit of standby power. It isn't a huge amount. It's just sort of part of the Energy Star compliance um, for the full sort of level they're going for. And if you're finding that your monitor isn't waking up properly, with your system, if you send your computer to sleep, your computer wakes up, your monitor's not waking up properly. It could be that your deep sleep settings causing issues. So you can turn this off and you can do that for DisplayPort and HDMI separately. And then hopefully you won't have that issue. I just leave it on because I don't really send my computer to sleep, so I don't really need to use this. Quick start mode. Usually when you turn the monitor on, it displays a splash screen with Predator, NVIDIA G-Sync, and it takes a little bit of time to actually turn on. If, on the other hand, you have quick start mode on, you then turn the monitor off, turn it on again. It doesn't display the splash screen, it just comes to life very quickly indeed. And to be honest, I'm just going to leave that quick start mode to on. I don't really care for the splash screen. I'm not really too fussed either way, but 
That was a pretty quick startup, I'll take it. Power off, USB charge. So this means that when the monitor is switched off, and that doesn't mean if you switch it off as in you've completely unplugged the power, but if you just sort of, so if you just use the power button here to turn it off and into its active off state, and you've got power charge, and you've got power off USB charge set to on, that means you can actually charge devices connected to the monitor, even when you're not using the monitor and it's not sort of fully switched on. Whereas with this switched off, you won't be able to do that, but it will slightly reduce your standby power consumption. And that is even if you're not actually using the USB port, which is why I just had it set to off. And because I don't use the USB ports on this monitor, I don't charge things. So if you want the lowest possible standby power consumption, turn this off. And as I mentioned, if you want it even lower, you can use the little zero watt power switch at the back to completely cut power to the monitor. There are also a few final little things to note. You might have noticed when I was changing various settings, if you change things, you can then select Save Settings 2. And that is how you change what your Game Mode 1, Game Mode 2 and Game Mode 3, your Action, Racing and Sports settings will actually do. There are also a few final things to note. There's a little eye there, Information. So if you press that, it'll tell you a few little things like the resolution, the refresh rate that the monitor's set to or more specifically the static refresh rate that you've selected in Windows or your game, and the mode it's operating in, so normal mode, NVIDIA G-Sync, or ULMB. And there's an option to reset all settings to the factory defaults as well. Finally, you'll see there I've changed my hotkeys back, so mode user there, and that goes into the modes menu, which I showed you towards the start of the video. But if you want to quickly get into that at any time when you're in the sort of main menu system, that's what that little icon there does. So that just gets onto your modes menu. So that's really all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Acer XN253QX. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.